Hello and welcome back. I'm Melinda Bigley and today I wanted to show you guys just a few things in IQ Designer um, that you probably know but just to reinforce for you. So if we're going to go out, you're going to see the beginning screen like this. You're going to go into IQ Designer and then into Shapes. They call that the stamp key in your manual, this little thing, but there's shapes on it so we all just call it shapes. So what you'll see here is you've got a list of 30 shapes of just the outline okay and then when you go into the next section you've got the same exact shapes with just the fill and the next one has your fill and your outline so you don't have to go in and add your fill or your outline if you if you want to if you know you want to have say this flower you can just pick that one and then if you want to um, if you want to change your your line property you can go ahead and do that you can choose whatever you want you can do candle wicking grab your paint bucket and just tap on that if you want to change your fill you can do that go into your decorative fills this one's very pretty that's one of the ones added with the um, Solaris 3 upgrade Oops. I use paint bucket with the Solaris 3 upgrade and you um, or the vision um, that was our upgrade last year and very very pretty fill um, and then you can change the aspects of that there so let's go back to um, let's see we can go all clear and then select another shape if you want one. So if we go into our shapes again, you've got, obviously this is the same exact thing. That's your default. You've got that shape there. But now if you go to the next one, it looks kind of like a little waving flag. You've got a variety of closed shapes that are a little bit more detailed, not just plain shapes. Uh, and then the next one is a variety of open shapes. So you can't necessarily put a fill. You can in this and you know, in a couple of them, but they're just a lot more um, variety within that. And then your next tab is your, um, your flower, which brings back memory from, um, you can hold things in your memory. And then you've also got the little uh, designs that you have saved within your embroidery side and added to in that. And, and I've done a bunch of film videos on that. So then you've also got um, under this little frame, your little hoop symbol, you've got the variety of different hoops that you can select for that. Okay, so let's just go through, let's grab a shape. Um, go into this one. Actually, let's grab something from in here. Let's just grab, oh heck, let's grab the bear, a little outline of a bear head. Okay, so you've got your bear. Let's go up and select, um, go back to the default with your satin stitch, and you're going to grab your paint bucket. I'm just going to click on that, so we've got the bear with the brown highlight. Oops. And then let's go into our fills. And I think I'm going to go back to, so you know you've got your your default, which is your satin stitch. You've got a stippling, and then you have all of your designer fills within that little genre. So let's go to this one, and we'll just pick the brown as well, make him all brown. And, and there you go. You can go to the next one. And you've got your satin stitch around that. Now, you've got the ability to affect that satin stitch there, but what I usually do is up my width of my satin stitch um, so that it's more substantial. And, um, and then you can change other aspects of it. But then you can actually, if you want to, you can bring in something. And actually, if you want to, let's, let's do this instead. Let's go back one. Let's go to the solid shapes and select what I'm going to do with this is actually size down and we're going to make eyes so let's bring that up to that point that's probably good 
and then let's duplicate and we can go size again even though we're just going to be moving this and then we will pick black oops i always forget that i need to grab my paint bucket um looks like those are a little bit off but you would make sure that those were perfectly on and then i'm going i would take my bucket and make sure that this actually was black as well that's why it's making that knock knock sound so i would grab my paint bucket and grab that and then you've got eyes now these eyes are not going to be in the exact right spot as you can probably tell but i would have to go back and fix that and if you do want to let's say you want to go back um you can grab either something um something within this but once you go back you can see that this arrow is now um grayed out so i can't go back to um, select something or reverse back to before i move this little eye um, you need to you would have to go in and and redo that but what here's one thing you could do you could grab let's say i really don't like where that is i'm gonna erase it get rid of it and how would i fix that i'm gonna go to the brown I'm gonna grab my paint bucket and drop that back in. And now I've got um, the ability to redo that. So I can go into shapes, grab a circle again, because now that that circle is on top of the, um, the other shape, I cannot change that. I can't select it in other words, but what I can do now, let's see, let's go back to that. I am going to change the size of that. And in fact, let's get this up here that way there's no issue I'm going to size this down now it is nice when you do something like eyes that they're symmetric you want to duplicate them um, in instead of um, trying to fix that from your um, and trying to redo that next to it it's a lot easier to uh, to duplicate so you know they're exact same size. So I'm going to grab this eye and I'm gonna bring that part of it down. And you can see this is in two sections. magic wand I'm going to just bring that down to that point and I'm going to grab this part of it and bring that down and line them up and close and move forward and that's pretty good so now you've got two eyes on your little bear and you can add from that you can add little ears if you take a little semicircle and you know change the color of that you can add little inside of ears and things like that and my dog is hitting the the tripod so looks like he needs to go out so i'm gonna leave you there um, just a few tips just to get you kind of familiar once again with iq so that you know where things are within here and you've got your your shapes and you've got your um little solid shape solid with the line property and then just the line property so lots and lots and lots of options you guys have seen a lot of videos from me on iq um, you can take all of these shapes and turn them into something that you wouldn't necessarily have thought that they could be used for here's something that you can do let's go back and all clear on this this is just something i thought of just now but you can do and i think i've done this before in fact let's go back grab this this kind of looks like a little street sign like you would put your name on so let's, let's do let's do, um, do black and move forward and then if you take this and go into embroidery say add and you can add your name And 
Now that's too big, obviously, but what we can do is when we're in embroidery, I can go to edit and go to size and bring that down a little bit. And you have a little sign that you can embroider on something. And obviously it'd be more, way more fun to add something fun to that, like a, a flower or something, you know, whatever. Do a little motorcycle if somebody's into motorcycles, that kind of thing. So hopefully that's fun for you guys. Um, I hope that you guys are having a great day. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't joined So Blessed Quilting and Embroidery on Facebook, please do so. And um, we have lives every Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time with a whole bunch of information and um, just a great community. So come and join us there. I've had a lot of you join, by the way. Thanks so much. And thank you again for all your comments. We really appreciate it. We read all of them and send back comments to all of you. So I hope everybody's doing well and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.